And with that, we'll bring in a man who has multiple degrees from MIT, including a PhD in biological engineering. He is also running for Senate in 2020. Welcome, Dr. Shiva. So nice to have you on the show today. Great to be here, Christina. Hope you're well. Absolutely. Okay, so we've all been held as a captive audience, right, watching President Donald Trump handle the coronavirus outbreak, the situation. He has received both praise and criticism. Uh, what do you think? How has the president handled the outbreak? Well, he's handled, you know, as the best he could, given the fact that he's surrounded by sharks and people who are not really advising him well on the science side of it. What, I, what I'm talking about is uh, Fauci. Um, and that's what's unfortunate because, you know, the president went through the Russian collusion nonsense that he had to go through. Then he had to go through the impeachment thing. And now he's having to deal with this coronavirus. And unfortunately, this guy Fauci has been in this environment for nearly four decades across multiple presidents. And he's essentially embedded into the scientific establishment, which has created an unfortunate lie about the immune system and an unfortunate lie about the solution to something uh, like this called the coronavirus, or more importantly, infectious disease, without any real emphasis, which is a real issue, about the fact that it is a overactive, dysfunctional, weakened immune system that overreacts, and that's what causes damage to the body. And unfortunately, Fauci has not talked about that because the truth of that leads to a solution which has nothing to do with mandating vaccines and shutting down the country. And that's what's unfortunate. Absolutely. And I'm glad you said solution. I'm going to get that to that a little later in the discussion. But many people, you are talking about Dr. Fauci right now. Many people are questioning both Dr. Fauci and Dr. Birx when it comes to these models that continue to change and their motives, which you kind of touched on a little bit. What is your take on these doctors that are advising the president and why they're advising him the way that they are? Look, if you look, uh, Christina, at the typical MD, many of them go into wanting to become a doctor out of some noble service. But fundamentally, the medical school education is really a big pharma a medical education where the doctor is really trained if this, then this. And the then is typically a pharmaceutical drug or some uh, harsh medical intervention. Now, if you look at someone like a Fauci and Bricks, they're sort of at the top of their quote unquote game, which means they're highly embedded into the big pharma model of medical education and the big pharma model of what the solution is. And that solution is typically a direct line from this disease, find typically a virus or a bug, and then recommend a vaccine or some harsh chemical solution. And most of that has to do with profiting the very, very big pharma companies. And so if you look at someone like Fauci, he's a guy who architected the big lie that HIV is responsible for AIDS. And it's a much deeper discussion, but he built his entire career on that, not talking about the fact it's the suppression of the immune system and people's immune system gets suppressed. You, you can react to all sorts of exogenous things coming in. So this gentleman, and by the way, he, he, he prides himself on connections with Hollywood and Elton John and all this. And I think there's a group trying mm -hmm. to make him the sexiest man alive on people. But you're talking about a guy who's embedded <laughs> into the deep state. And he's your typical example of the worst of the modern scientific establishment. Okay, well, let, let's take a look at this right now. H1N1, the swine flu, right? Back then, there was a completely different reaction to it. Dr. Fauci was in the administration at that time. President Barack Obama, he had a completely different reaction. Fauci had different recommendations that he's having now. Even the media coverage has been completely different from the swine flu now to the coronavirus. Why? Why do you see such a change? Well, look, if you take a systems approach, a systems approach forces you to integrate multiple pieces. There's a political piece here, there's a health piece here, and there's the economic piece here. In the case of Barack Obama, there wasn't a quote unquote overreaction, right? We didn't shut down the country. We, we had mm -hmm. people, the media essentially protected. Here's a gentleman, Obama, I'm talking about, who did not allow the big banks to fail when they should have failed. He used quantitative easing to essentially bail them out. And since 2008 and 9, this country has been essentially on a crack model uh, uh, of, of running the economy where we print money and that's what the country has gotten used to. And because of Obama, we, we decidedly destroyed our economic base by uh, outsourcing a tremendous amount of manufacturing to China. We destroyed our innovation base by allowing China to steal. So when Trump comes into office, 
he's dealing essentially with a catastrophic situation. And I think Trump knew that what was going on with the Fed and with quantitative easing was going to destroy the economy of this country. So at best, what he was trying to do was save the economy by bringing back manufacturing, by protecting the intellectual property drainage in this country. However, when you have the level of things that he had to go through, I think the deep state's really effect was to hit him with this coronavirus. And what's the end goal? Well, as you just rightfully said, when Obama was running, you had nearly, I think, uh, 60,000 deaths, right, with H1N1. Here you have close to maybe six, 10,000 deaths. And we don't even know what the numerator and the denominator are here, because they're blanketly assigning COVID-19 to people who may not even have it. And we're seeing a concomitant, you know, uh, a number of, there's drop in pneumonia. So where's those drops? You know, the people are getting the flu yes. or in the flu season. So you have totally yes. cooking of the books. And I can go more into detail on that. We have, you have the cooking of the books. You have a political motive of the fact that the establishment elite did not want a guy like Donald Trump ever getting elected. You know, and so he did get elected. So they, they've been reeling from that. And I don't think they want him to get a second term, nor do they want a guy like me to you know, win in Massachusetts. But <laughs> given that, exactly. uh, what you're looking at is a, is a strategic move to essentially destroy the economy as using it as a vehicle to impose not only vaccine mandates, which we could talk about, but also as an opportunity to suppress dissent and destroy freedom as a way to curtail what a guy like Donald Trump can do, what, what, what people in America can, can do. And this has essentially been the modus operandi of people like Fauci for many, many years. But for him, this is a huge opportunity. And this, this ain't his first rodeo. This is his second rodeo, if you go back looking at the HIV AIDS, you know, fake causality. Uh, you know what, you just brought up something about the death count, and I wanted to touch on that with you. We are hearing reports from doctors who are saying they are being instructed to count deaths as coronavirus deaths, even if the person died from a different condition, but at some point in time had contact with somebody who had coronavirus. Dr. Burks just came out and said they're classifying everybody with the virus as a death instead of dying from the virus as a death. Uh, why do you think that they are classifying this way? Why do you think there's an exaggeration in the numbers here, if you think there's an exaggeration in the death count numbers? Look, what I do know is this, that the WHO, in conjunction with the CDC, is the one that decides what are called codes, diagnosis codes. Um, most people don't know, when you go into a doctor's office, a doctor looks at you, and in their you know, IT systems, they have to say, okay, Christina has this or this. That is called a diagnosis code. That code, Christina, comes from the um, uh, WHO. So for coronavirus, as I understand, they created two codes. One code was you explicitly, you know, had a test and you had COVID-19. The other one was completely nebulous. Well, it sort of smells like that. Maybe he's got some chest pains. Something so broad, but it was still under the COVID. The doctors in the United States received a letter from the CDC, as I have found out, that went to hospital administrators encouraging them to blur both of those codes. So if someone comes in, they have a pre-existing condition, someone with a chest pain, COVID-19, okay? And in fact, when mm -hmm. someone dies, they do the test. Sometimes the test doesn't come back for 14 days. They're still putting COVID-19 on them. So they're increasing the numerator. And then as far as the denominator goes, we don't even know how many people actually have been infected because this is, again, mm -hmm. a flu-type virus. So the denominator could be massive. So you have mm -hmm. cooking of the books for two reasons. Hospital administrators get money for the COVID-19 mm -hmm. diagnosis, plus they also get kickbacks to what are called GPOs and PBMs for the ventilators. So there's, there's a total collusion going on, and it's not about at all about people's lives. So those critically ill patients, immediately they put them on ventilators. And as I've shared in one of my videos, the ventilators actually can burst and further damage the lungs because the real issue here is the lungs are being filled with fluid and the fluid is occurring because of the overreactive immune system, which can really be addressed by IV vitamin C, high dosage. And that is not in the discourse. In fact, 80 to 90% of the people go on ventilators are dying. So this is essentially a death hmm. sentence that they're putting people on. 
Wow, that is so interesting. Well, President Donald Trump said that the cure cannot be worse than the problem, and yet here we are. We continue to be on lockdown status. Do you think the economy should have been closed in the first place? And is this the new status quo anytime we see a new virus? It's a great question. In my letter to the president, you know, which I sent on March 23rd, I said, look, we live in the era of personalized and precision medicine, which is an expertise of mine, which I get invited all over the world to talk about. What, is, what that means is one size does not fit all. You don't lock down everyone. That's what Fauci's model is. It's a medieval model of medicine. Mm -hmm. And so what we fundamentally have is the approach that we should be taking is taking the people who are truly immunocompromised, truly have COVD-19, fine, they should be isolated, boosted up with you know, immunosupporting things like vitamin A, D, and C. Those of us who are well, you know, we should be back to work. We should be running this economy. Okay, if you want to take something to support mm -hmm. your immune system, do that which should be the vitamin A, the D, et cetera. One of the, the two most disastrous things here are we're socially distancing people and hiding them. Go look at the research, a landmark study. When you isolate people, that is one of worse than uh, the detriments from obesity, smoking and heart disease. Social isolation actually leads to upregulation uh, of inflammatory compounds in the body and downregulation of antiviral compounds. So you're basically increasing the person for viral infection by the amount of stress you're causing them from social isolation. And separate from that, we're telling people not to go out in the sun, which is vitamin D. Vitamin D is an antimicrobial. Mm -hmm. So this is essentially a recipe for actually hurting people, not really supporting them, but all brought to you under the rubric. And you know, media says it over and over again, social distancing, social distancing, flatten the curve. And this is sort of the nonsensical mm -hmm. science that Fauci is expounding, and it's what needs to be exposed. And really, what we really need to talk about if we truly care about public health is building up people's immune system. But that's not what Fauci and company are concerned about. Their model is big ag, which dirty air, dirty water, dirty food. They want people to consume not food that's healthy for them. And then the solution is vaccine mandates. Think about what's going to happen a year from now. When you go to get your driver's license, Christina, where's your vaccine card. And Fauci's already talking about that. Mm -hmm. yes. Can you go to a gym? Oh, yes, he is. This is about developing a police state. I hate to use these very yes. harsh terms, but that is what we're talking about, control of the individual. It's, it's, a, it's a very, very dangerous time, but it's also an opportunity for Americans to go back to our roots, which is freedom, which is basically listening to truth and basically starting to you know, take back what is really ours, which is our truth, freedom, and health. And Fauci's not about that. He serves the masters of Bill Gates, the Chan Zuckerbergs, the Clintons, the CDC, the WHO, and in fact, the Chinese. This is what we're seeing before in front of our eyes is exporting Chinese model of governance, top down, controlling the last oasis of freedom, which is our human body. And it's very concerning. It's very scary, as well as social distancing. And we just have a little bit of time left here. Another thing they're pushing are these masks and these gloves. And I'm seeing people making these makeshift homemade masks and literally putting their lives in the hands of these masks and gloves. How well do these actually work? And you touched on it just briefly, but uh, what is the real solution to coronavirus? Look, the real solution, Christina, as any solution to any pathogen, we need to understand that the medical establishment, the pharmaceutical medical establishment for hundreds of years has built its entire foundation of always blaming a virus or a germ, always. So when scurvy came around, remember scurvy when people's teeth would fall out and they had um, bleeding gums? Oh, it must be a virus. Well, it was deficiency in vitamin C 100 years later, when even people on the ground knew it. Mm -hmm. When pellagra came out, which was when people's skin and everything would get all dry, horribly dry and like eczema, ultimate conditions. Oh, it must be the Italians who are coming over the ship. They're bringing some dirty uh, germs and we need to quarantine them. Well, it turned out it was a deficiency in niacin, so on. So what we're seeing here is tr the virus hunters, the bacterial hunters creating fear so the real solution is, number one, is to recognize that the immune system is quite strong. We're actually a walking ecosystem of germs, 380 trillion viruses, 60 trillion bacteria among the 6 trillion cells. There's viruses all around us. The reality is a strong immune system always handles this beautifully. It's the weakened immune system. So all those masks and all this stuff, People didn't wear this for humanity, okay? The issue is, how do you beef up the immune system? As I wrote to the president, mm -hmm. vitamin D. Vitamin D is an antimicrobial. Why do you think in many of these hot countries, we don't hear any about this? Vitamin 
uh, mm -hmm. A, which is all from the rich um, leafy green, dark green vegetables and fruits. That supports mm -hmm. your body to create uh, keratin, cytokeratin through vitamin A, which protects your cells. So these are the two foundation pillars. Yet Fauci and Briggs do not talk anything about that because a V in vitamin is an anathema for their vaccines. And same with the V in vitamin mm -hmm. C is an anathema for their ventilators. You see, it's ventilators and vaccines. Yeah. And this is big pharma. And these guys need to be fully exposed. And in my view, people like Fauci need to be indicted for a lot of serious scientific crimes. That's why when we put out this petition, Fire Fauci, I think close to 50,000 people have signed it in 48 hours. And at least we have close to 1,000 medical doctors from all over the world. Everyday people get this. In fact, wow. the unfortunate handcuffed medical professionals get this. This is an opportunity, a huge opportunity, Christina. The real solution is for us to rethink how much governance and how much over-respect we give to MDs who unfortunately know nothing about the immune system. They don't study that in medical college or medical school. Ex excellent points there, Dr. Shiva. Thank you so much for joining us here on America's Daily Report and sharing your insight. We appreciate you.